Today on Monkey Life, Alison looks forward to the prospect of a new species at the park, baboons. I just think they're great. Jeremy will love them to bits. They're Hamadryas baboons. They're absolutely fantastic. Recently arrived pet trade marmoset Clyde confounds Steph when he braves the great outdoors for the first time. Hey, brave boy. Going out even without Jen. Look at you go. And a sunny treat delights Chippy's woolly monkey troop. Monkey World in Dorset, buried deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr. Alison Cronin, rescue and rehabilitate abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. You just never know how it's going to work. The park provides a home for more than 260 primates from 25 different species. It's been quite a year for the orangutan nursery group. An established male member of the group left for pastures new, and a fun-loving female arrived to join the gang. There's also been a house move for one of the park's youngsters. Hujan made the short journey from Tuan's adult group to become part of the nursery, and get to know orangutans closer to his age. He's actually doing really, really well. I mean, he's playing with everyone. It's really keeping the nursery in a really good frame of, of mood. Um, Oshin has taken an absolutely massive liking to him as well. Um, so, yeah, he's doing really, really well. Hujan's integration was also helped along by an early friendship with Kayan, who's just a couple of weeks younger. She arrived from Twycross Zoo after being rejected by the other orangutans there when her mother died. Kayan is loving life in the nursery group and has also struck up a close bond with Rika. Kayan is doing very well for herself. I mean, she came to us, she'd been through an awful ordeal of losing her mother at quite a detrimental age as well. Um, massive ordeal, big emotions for her. So when she first came here, um, we expected her, to be honest, to be a little bit sad, maybe a little bit quiet, but it was the complete opposite. She is a completely cheeky little thing. She was causing all sorts of mischief. However, everyone pretty much seemed to love her in here. And she's doing very, very well for herself, considering her age. Play for these youngsters is a vital part of building bonds and learning life skills, including socialising with others as they reach maturity. All of our guys in the nursery are generally orphans, um, so they haven't had that attachment to their mother and aren't able to learn all the things that they need to learn off their mother, which is an awful lot of things um, in a wild scenario, but also lots of things in captive world as well. Um, particularly with the socialisation side of things, they are a solitary animal at the end of the day, so they're not really made to, to have social times. But when they're younger, they do have a playful character. They like a lot of play. So it teaches them how to kind of behave in a group scenario as well. It's an important part of growing up for these orphans especially if they ever have babies of their own. Some of our last lot have gone through um, and gone off to other zoos and have had babies and are looking at them themselves, which is just fantastic news. It shows that this whole process does work. Um, so the more orangutans like kind of in this scenario, really, the more they've got to learn, the more they'll educate themselves and the better off they'll be for the future. The team's hard work equipping their charges with the right skills has paid off in recent years with a number of nursery residents graduating and starting their own families at other centres around Europe. Xiao Ning now has two children to care for at Rostock Zoo in Germany. Kai and Jolie have welcomed their own infant, Membelai, in Spain. And more recently, Sylvester left to head up his own group in Basel Zoo in Switzerland. He's now settled in, finally joining his new small troop in their outdoor enclosure. We're very, very happy. Me personally, I'm ecstatic, to be honest, to hear the news that Sylvester's finally gone outside um, and he's getting to actually enjoy that absolutely enormous, amazing enclosure that they've got out there. Um, so, so pleased to hear that Sylvester's getting on very well in Basel Zoo. It's really great. It's not just the animals that need looking after at the park. Their living quarters and outdoor enclosures do too. 
The park is situated on a 65 hectare site, which needs constant attention, updating, and sometimes a little bit of a revamp. Today, the primate care team are in the process of renovating the squirrel monkey's wonderful natural enclosure. Right, so we need to come down. Fix them off the bottom there, because yeah. you might fall. Yeah. Everything that's been in here for a year, two years, it's all rotten now. So it's just time for refurb, get it all branched out, and fill in the gaps that we can hopefully utilise. We've got a narrow enclosure, so we've got to be careful with height, but that doesn't stop us creating a network of branches lower down so that the primates can utilise this enclosure far greater than what they have been. The team are redesigning and future-proofing the area with two other species in mind. The squirrel monkeys share the house with their neighbours, Marmoset Loki and Chloe and Desmond, the Saki monkeys. The elderly couple are not as agile as the squirrel monkeys, so careful thought has to go into the outdoor layout. The new design means the three separate outside spaces will be suitable for all the residents of the house, should a swap around ever be necessary. Do you want to cable tie it to it? It's not a point of just putting one or two branches in to link up an area. We have to create a network so that it makes life easier for our older guys that potentially will come in here. It's taken a couple of days, but the renovated enclosure is ready. The group of three common squirrel monkeys are giving it a test run. Logan, Lopez and Lucille form one of the two small troops currently at the park. The other is made up of Nueve and Kimbo, the latest arrival, who's still adjusting to his new life. The team are hoping all five will eventually come together as one settled group. The trio of common squirrel monkeys are let out and are immediately curious about the revamped enclosure, although a little cautious at first. Lopez scent marks the branches to claim the new structure as theirs. Some of the branching is a lot higher than before and a good test of their agility and confidence. The primate care staff haven't put out any food for the moment. They're watching the squirrel monkey's progress to make sure there are no problem areas for them in the enclosure. They'll use food to entice the monkeys back inside should they need to. So changing up the environment is really important because it gets the primates thinking about life a bit more. If you've got exactly the same surroundings all day, day in, day out, you can get quite bored. Um, so changing the environment is great for them. It keeps them engaged. It also can act, the way that we branch the enclosure can give them better access to other parts of the enclosure that perhaps they didn't have as good access to before. Uh, it just keeps things much more interesting for them. The enclosure has always been full of natural planting and the new perching gives the squirrel monkeys plenty of opportunity to hunt for insects in areas they might not have reached previously. It looks like the trio are loving their new look enclosure. The team will monitor them closely and tweak the layout if necessary as they gain confidence and become more adventurous. But so far, the renovation has been a success. The barn woolies are in for a bright and colourful treat today. The park has been given some freshly harvested sunflowers from a local farm and Primate Care Staff member Sharon is busy putting them all around the enclosure. It's something a little different for Chippy's troop of seven. It's really important to try and just give them a variety. I mean, they do get their sort of bog standard sort of diet of you know, fresh fruit and vegetables throughout the day, but if we can add in something like this that is, they, it is completely seasonal, then it's just a really nice treat for them. So when they come out and see all these bright flowers, I think they're going to be very intrigued, hoping that it's going to be a delicious treat, and then they're just going to hopefully just be busy all day, you know, just kind of tucking into them and, and just seeing what, they, what they're all about. Some of the sunflowers still have their beautiful bright petals, and others are wilted and laden with seeds. But the woolly monkeys will have to work hard to get to them. 
certainly going to be nice and challenging. And I think that that's the aim of, of the day, really, is just trying to make sure that we keep these guys busy and both mentally and physically stimulated. So we've tied them up in all different locations around the enclosure so that they have to really work as well if they want to kind of explore what each, each sort of flower has, has to offer. The group are let out. One or two are in more of a rush than others. There's a lot of happy trilling as they examine the brightly coloured flowers scattered throughout the enclosure. Catalina and Dad Chippy are first to check things out. Initially, they seem more interested in the stalks than the seed heads. At three years old, Catalina is still young and inexperienced, but she's very confident and now has a playmate, her half-sister Zena. They share the same mum, Eva. Zena is only 11 months old and still sticking close to mum, watching and learning all the time. Her father is Zavi, the other adult male in the group. He's using all his strength and agility and his long prehensile tail as he tears apart one of the stalks. At 33, Quapa is the oldest female in the group. She's taken a liking to the sunflower leaves, ripping them off and tucking in, despite appearing precariously balanced on the edge of a platform. It's a demonstration of her core strength. The other female is Piquita. She's had a difficult time this year. She needed an emergency hysterectomy following a prolapsed womb, but she's recovered remarkably well. She's bounced back from that and now is in, in top shape and she's, yeah, she's just a, a really sort of strong-headed, so sort of great female and she's strong friends with Quapper still, so those two are sort of really quite a formidable pair. It's taken a little while, but Paquita has discovered the secret of the sunflowers and is gorging herself on the seeds. Now the others have seen how it's done, all the woolies are busily attacking the seed heads. Took quite a lot of investigation and the slightly brighter characters like Ava really kind of going, I know that there's something, you know, tasty in here somewhere, so a bit of perseverance from those individuals. And once they figured out what it was, then they, yeah, they all really got stuck in and, yeah, complete success. And with so many protein-packed seed heads around the enclosure, the Woolies will keep busy and active for the rest of the day. It's been more than a week since Alison travelled to Fairham in Hampshire to collect male marmoset Clyde, as a prospective partner for Jenny, a female of similar age. In the last few days, the primate care staff have been busy introducing the pair within the confines of their indoor house, and the plan seems to be working. So Jenny and Clyde are looking really good now. Uh, initially, Clyde was a bit overexcited. I think it was a bit, a bit too full on. Um, but then the last day or so, they've been really, really nice together. They spent the full day together yesterday. We saw lots of really nice grooming. Um, Clyde was doing a lot of inspecting Jenny's fur and, and going through it and, and doing some really, really nice grooming behavior. Uh, so yeah, everything's looking pretty good. So it's time for the next big test and let them outside and let Clyde experience the great outdoors. This will be a big moment for Clyde. At his previous home, he had a cage and was let out in the sitting room, but has never had an outdoor area before. The large outdoor enclosure will be a very new experience. He'll have to navigate his way around the platforms and branches, and he'll be able to hunt and forage for live insects amongst the natural foliage. So the outdoors is going to be quite intimidating, I think. Uh, as far as we're aware, that Clyde was only ever in a living room, so he's never really spent much time outside. So it can be quite scary, you know, you've got all this light, all these noises, all these other primates around, you've got the visitors walking around. Um, so we wanted to wait until he was hopefully with Jenny before we let him out, because having that other marmoset with him will hopefully do a lot to calm his nerves. And I would expect to see him beetling around after Jen and not letting her too far out of his sight, because it will be a little overwhelming. Then, guys. Before Clyde reaches the outdoor enclosure, he has to negotiate a long tunnel system. I can understand he'd be a bit nervous when he first comes out because he doesn't know where this tunnel's going to. 
Hello. Oh, hi, Clyde. It seems Clyde is more adventurous and confident than Steph thought. He's first out, heading quickly along the overhead tunnel. Are you brave boy? Going out even without Jen. Look at you go. Jenny follows behind, a reassuring presence if needed. But Clyde's already made it to the enclosure entrance. He pauses for a minute to take it all in. Oh, good work, little man. Seconds later, he launches himself into the enclosure and, for the first time in his life, Clyde begins to explore the great outdoors. Lack of experience doesn't hold him back. He moves around the branching with ease, comfortable amongst the surrounding foliage. Brave boy. New mate Jenny isn't far behind. She's made excellent progress after recent dental surgery. She demonstrates how well she's recovered, hunting for small insects around the enclosure. Clyde has made himself at home. Moving around the outdoor space will help strengthen his muscles, and the accompanying sunshine will provide vital vitamin D, necessary for strong bones. And completing his new life is Jenny, offering the companionship he so desperately needed. The small monkey team have also been kept busy with another of their charges. Brass, an unusual pet trade hybrid whose origins are a mystery, recently had treatment for a nail infection. Quite a few of his nails needed removing, and test results have come back confirming a fungal infection. The team are continuing with treatment, but it's going to be a slow process. We've seen a minor improvement, but yeah, we haven't seen any major differences. It's been a few weeks. Uh, we expect it's probably going to take a few months, um, but they're looking a lot better. He seems to be uh, walking around a lot better on them because we know after the vet day he was a little bit sore, so we treated him with Calpol. Um, hopefully soon we'll start to see some nails growing back. In the meantime, Brass appears happy and comfortable, moving around the branching with ease. He also has the benefit of close companion Evie, who's never far from his side. These two are a really weird hybridised mix, um, one that we don't know the answer to. Uh, I don't think we'll ever know the answer to, but the pair together, strong bonded, always have been since day one. Chill together, not much arguments at all, they're a, a steady happy couple, yeah. The primate care team will carry on with the treatment, and hopefully Brass will continue his slow but steady recovery over the next few months. As another year at the park nears its end, there's been some exciting news for all the team. The number of different species may soon be increasing, with the arrival of six baboons. I just think they're great. Jeremy will love them to bits, because as he always says, he loves oldy, worldy, roughy, tufty monkeys, and you don't get more roughy, tufty than a hamadryas baboon. So yeah, I'd like to try and help out with the baboons, and we can do that, try and get that done sooner rather than later. The baboons, three males and three females, are currently being looked after by Animals Lebanon, a charity based in Beirut, which campaigns to improve animal welfare and legislation. It's run by Jason Meyer and his partner, Maggie. All six baboons originally came from a small zoo in Lebanon and have been looked after by the organization in the hills above the city since 2017. He's always asked if Monkey World could take these baboons and we just haven't had a place to put them. But now we're at a point where it's possible now. Our stumptail macaques have over the years dwindled in number, but they were elderly, and um, we only have three remaining now. So really that whole enclosure that was designed for a large group of stumpies could be quite a nice home for six baboons. They're absolutely fantastic. Um, and again, I'd love to be able to help out Jason and Maggie in Animals Lebanon. Today, Alison is having a video call catch-up with Jason. Hi, Alison. Hey, good morning, Jason. How are you? 
I'm good. It's been a long time. The baboon's current home was always meant to be temporary. But the COVID pandemic and other local circumstances delayed finding a solution. The climate in the area has also made the situation challenging. Strangely, the last couple winters were very cold there. And yeah. It's never happened before. So there's actually a half a meter of snow. And so they're fine. I do it up, but it takes so much effort to get that place insulated. And there's really no way to heat it. It's just not an ideal setup. And I would hate to have to rebuild around them where instead, if it was just an empty space and I had some time and a little bit more money, I could do something much more nice and permanent. Mm -hmm. Alison's keen to get some background information on the six primates. They've not had any particular health issues or problems no, at all? No, um, that's it. Rambo with his teeth and he's missing a tiny bit of one finger. And other than that, nothing. But before anything can happen, the move needs to be agreed between the UK and Lebanese authorities followed by health checks to obtain the necessary paperwork. It could take months of planning before the scheme to move the troop of baboons to Dorset becomes a reality. You guys look after yourselves and um, look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thank you very much. I All appreciate right. it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Monkey World and Animals Lebanon have collaborated before, when they rescued chimpanzee Kiki, and more recently, Gwenon's Benny and Nia and Nora the Loris. They're just some of the kindest people wanting to make a difference for both wildlife and domestic animals in and out of Lebanon. So um, it's the right time, I think, for both Animals Lebanon and for Monkey World to be able to consider whether we can help them out. The prospect of a small troop of baboons being rehomed at the park demonstrates the constant evolution of the team's work to do their utmost to help primates in need around the globe. It's already been a busy year, with the arrival of Argentine chimps, Sasha and Kangoo. Yeah, well then, everyone. Everyone be nice. Both now settled into individual groups. Good girl! And the rehoming of lone squirrel monkey Kimbo, who's still learning how to behave like a monkey. Work to rescue and rehabilitate pet trade marmosets continues. We need sorting out. Here you go. As do efforts to maintain and improve the environment and houses enjoyed by the park's residents. Which now includes the need for a baboon-proof enclosure. Who knows what challenges next year might bring?